Merci. Greg, on l'a emballé. Alright guys, well, I get the honor uh, and the privilege of uh, leading us through communion today. Um, yeah, if you guys online, if you haven't gotten the elements or if you can't grab the element, come out and go ahead and do that. Um, but uh, anyway, I just want to share a few things before we do this. Uh, one is that there's some hard times we've all been going through, right? There's some challenging times. And um, we've had conversations in our family and our friends group that it's ugly sometimes. And then, like, we have family members we look at, like, I didn't want to be around you. We're coming to Thanksgiving, and I don't want to hear this, right? It's like, let's just have a good time. Let's, let's be there for each other. Let's love each other. And I think the love is, is the key um, in, in all this. Like, we forget that, right? We start seeing the, the negative in people, the, the darker things. But really, through all this, we're not called to be any blood party. We're, we're, we're Christ. And, and that's what really matters, is that, you know, no matter what changes around us, we're the same people. We're still in Christ, and that's who we need to be for other people. And, and love always finds a way to push through and perseveres in the sense that uh, a story of me and my son, uh, I have a great son. He's uh, 11, but he's so hard-headed and just fights on everything. If I say do this, he won't do it. If he knows he should do this, he won't do it. If he has to be quiet, he will It's like whatever we can do to disrupt the shit, sometimes we'll do it, and we get the, you know, in battle, and, and it's like sometimes I got to back off. Like, okay, my wife will remind me, he's only 11. It's okay. Um, but the one thing that always comes back on cue, like on beat, like a jazz ensemble, and they all come back on a certain beat, and they're together for a while, is that at night, uh, I get to pray with him and go to bed. And no matter how rough the day's been, if I go in there, uh, he's got a bed that's kind of a little bit high. Um, I just walk in there, and I'll just put his arm up over the, the rail. He knows I'm going to hold on to it. And pray for them. So it's like love is what really matters, right? And loving each other. Um, and just reaching out because during this time of uh, being stuck at home or not going to offices as much as we used to, or just whatever the case may be, we're not as social as we used to be, right? So it's super important to reach out to the guys and say, How you doing? Um, I think the journey groups are an awesome way. We, we just finished one in, in June, but it's been a long time ago now. It feels like it's not that long ago, but uh, we're actually something like that again. And I encourage you guys to continue to do stuff like that, whether it's it's the journey. I mean, I, I highly recommend that. But if it's just getting together like this on a Friday morning as we can, or church, or calling guys out, meeting them, it's so important. So important. So thanks, let me share that. Um, and just another quick little love story is that uh, you, you don't know that the love is occurring when it actually is, because uh, my story on that is my dog. Uh, I have a dog. It's uh, just a typical frustrating dog, right? You love him, but there's time they just frustrate him no end. And uh, he, he likes to eat soft food with his hard food, and when you don't feed him soft food, he just won't eat. And he's done this before, these cycles he goes through, and he dead eat, and he loses weight. So you start feeding him, and he eats too much, and he throws up. So it's this cycle you know, I'm trying to get through. And, and it was, uh, he, hadn't, like, he stopped eating on Saturday, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to wait you out. You're going to get hungry, you're going to eat. And of course, Tuesday come along, he wasn't eating, I'm like, I better so I fed him something small, whatever, knowing this might happen. And I'm on my Zoom call. I had three back-to-back -back calls. The first Zoom call just started. He comes in there and just throws up over my feet below the desk. I'm like, what the heck can I do? It? I can smell it. I'm like, I, I, got, I, told, I don't know if I told you, Jeremy. I think I was after we met, maybe before we met. But, uh, um, but it was just this, it was nauseating. It's like, this is horrible, you know? And, and then I cleaned it up. And the next call, then he, I sent him outside. And he, he figures out how to open the door. And he gets in. And I'm on my call, I came close to the leaves are blowing into the house. You know, I'm so fresh with the dog. I'm like, why do we have to? And my wife always complains, you know, when he does something, it's like, it's like always my fault. And your kids love the dog, but they don't really, like any kid, right? I have the same way. You don't take care of the dog that well. It's always parents. Um, so I'm like, all right, guys, I, I don't I don't understand what's going on. He got sick today and he did this. And then the, the following day, I wake up and he had, he had he going up everywhere again because I fed him that night again and he just threw up everywhere. And I'm like, man, this dog. You know, and I just made a comment off, offhand, like, you know, maybe just time for him to die, you know, because everybody hates him anyway. And, and they're all like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, and, and the kids are, you know, getting all sad about it. My wife's like, oh, doesn't that dog? I'm like, look, look. I never hear you really say that word love like a dog. It's always like, it's, you know, why'd you do that for? Why is he in here? Why are we happy? It's like, okay. Well, love is just that unknown, that unseen thread sometimes that happens. Y'all need to know it's there all the time. All I got to do is pull it. 
is fed there and recommends there. And that's that's so key. So um, I'm going to read through some verses. We get ready to do communion, and then there'll be a time of reflection at the end of that. And the last thing I want to share, outside of all that, is that when you when you're reflecting and all that, I want you to understand that, there, that we have voices, right? We have we have God's voice. We have Satan's voice. Um, and and God does convict us, right? He kind of says, hey, this is where you've gone wrong, or we need to change this, whatever. Um, but don't confuse that with the condemnation. You know, the conviction talks about our potential, but the condemnation um, kills, steals, and destroys, and actually, you know, is uh, full of fear. So don't don't confuse those two when you're reflecting and thinking back to things, even through the, the course of the days ahead. Um, and just to kind of help with the voices is that the God steals you while Satan rushes you. God reassures you, Satan frightens you. God leads you, Satan pushes you. God enlightens you, Satan confuses you. God forgives you, Satan condemns. God calms us, while straighten, Satan stresses us. Then God encourages us, while obviously Satan dis discourages us. And God will comfort us, while Satan will worry us. So just understand those definitions and, and walk through that as, as we go through our environment. Um, so, using the phone, electronics, technology, um, and uh, first verse here is uh, in Ephesians 1, 4 through 5. So just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So God chose you by his sovereign will. Romans 5, 7 through 8, 7 and 8. For scarcely for a righteous man will, will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So he saved you by his substitutionary death. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It was the guarantee of our inheritance until redemption, the purchased possession, to the praise of his glory. So he has sealed you forever through his spirit. Here it is. Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things, things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. His steadfast love sustains you. Again, love is the key. And then for the meat of this, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 28. Um, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so and so let him eat of the bread. And drink the cup. So, as a man ought to examine himself before he eats the bread or drinks the cup, let's let's go to prayer for a few moments and examine ourselves and confess whatever the Holy Spirit convicts us of, and not condemns.
I say, but what, what's he convicting us of? So take a few moments in prayer, and then I'll come back, and then we'll go through the elements. Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for this year you've given us. Um, and I just thank you for the darkness in the sense that it shines, that shows the evidence of light, uh, the, necess the necessary uh, this of the light, that there is no darkness with light, that no matter where we go, this following day, through Thanksgiving, through, through Christmas, through the rest of this pandemic or whatever it is, that whenever there's darkness, we can shine in that light, Lord, and that light will diffuse all darkness. I thank you that you've given us the love of Christ in our hearts and the Holy Spirit to guide us. Please guide each man and our families. Bless our paths. Help us be those ones that love one another. Help us find ways to reach out to men. 
other people, families, and assure them they are not alone. And though they may be convicted, they are not condemned. Breathe life into them and use us as a vessel in that matter. In Christ's name, amen.